Well, the good news is my message is only an hour, so we're, I'll have you out of here by 9 o'clock. Do you guys like Friday nights? <laughs> half the room's like, yes. The other half's like, It's nice. Are you ready? All right. So my message is rich church, poor church. And I had the idea from a book that I read one time about rich dad, poor dad. And this, can, this is actually a continuation of the message that I've been speaking on. This is kind of going to be wrapping it up with this. At least I think I might be wrapping it up with this. But last week we were talking about, I mentioned it already, about how Samuel positioned himself before the Lord. And we were talking last week about hearing, and we've been talking about seeing and how God wants us to ascend up higher. And he wants, to, he wants us to come up higher into, into his realm, into, into the realm of the Spirit, so that we can see and hear and so he can show us things. Because we need, we need to see, as a church, as a spiritual church, we are a spiritual church, and, and the church at large is supposed to be a spiritual church. And we need to ascend up into his presence to be able to see what he wants to show us. Because it says that the Holy Spirit, Jesus even said that when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to show us things to come. And that's his job. That's his, his, the Holy Spirit loves to show us things to come. That's what we call prophecy. Prophecy is being able, a real true prophetic word prophesies. It it speaks into your future. Words of knowledge are more confirming words. And there's there's different gifts that operate. but, But the idea of the prophetic is that it's looking long range to see something that you would not necessarily know. Now, word of knowledge, that's exactly what it is. It's it's information that you would not know on your own. It's supernatural information, words of knowledge that I have. I'm perceiving things. Jesus operated in all of those gifts. When you look look throughout the Gospels and you see Jesus, it says, and Jesus perceiving their thoughts, that's a word of knowledge. And Paul and the gifts come down and he's describing it. He breaks them down in these categories. But Jesus himself, he would prophesy words of knowledge. He would heal. He would do all the things that he sent back to the church through the Holy Spirit. Isn't it good to know that everything that we do, Jesus already did? And that we're, we're not illegal. Like when we get up and we do things in the spirit and we're operating in our gifts, we know that, hey, Jesus did it. Right? So if Jesus did it, I'm okay. And get, but guess what? Jesus also said that there's more things that I have to say to you, but you can't bear it up right now. You can't, you can't, you can't receive it. But when the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth comes, He's going to reveal things to you. So not even, not even Jesus, everything that He wanted to say, did He say? He left some stuff because He knew He had to go back, and He's like, you can't receive it. But when the Spirit of Truth comes, He's going to let you know. Isn't it good to know that the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Jesus, and Jesus is still speaking to His church? I'm so glad that Jesus is still speaking because if he stopped speaking, (laughs) we'd kind of be in trouble. I mean, thank God for the word, but what about revelation? What about the fact that I can read a scripture, come back again, read it again, have a different revelation on it? I can come back a year later, read the same thing and be like, how did I miss that? You can come back years later and be like, I don't remember reading that. Oh man, aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit? The word is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting, dividing, and piercing even down to the marrow of bone, discerning the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Aren't you glad that the word of God can cut through whatever you need to get rid of? (laughs) So my question is, are you hungry? Not like, Want you ready to go to Denny's? But are you hungry? Are you hungry? The word hungry, and spiritually speaking, the word hungry in the Greek means to crave ardently, to seek with eager desire. Are you craving? Are you hungry? Les Brown, one of my favorite, one of my favorite guys that that motivational guys that talk, Les Brown, he would say it like this. He'd be like, he goes, You just can't be hungry. You gotta be hungry. He's like, you got to be hungry, not just hungry. In fact, you know what? I would listen to him one, in his very beginning before he, before he took off and was, got to be known. He, 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 was, he was so persistent. He, he went to this, I believe it was a radio station, 
And he would bug the owner every single day. And he kept telling him, I don't have a job for you. I don't have anything for you. He'd be, come back, sir, sir, um, uh, my name is Les Brown. He goes, and I, and I just wanted, he goes, I don't have anything for you. Why do you keep coming back? Come back the next day. Same thing over and over. Finally, the guy was like, you know what? He's like, I- I'm going to give you a job. I don't know what I'm going to do for you, but come back tomorrow. I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to give you something to do. Everybody say persistence. persistence. Luke eleven five. Here's a story to help you out. Suppose one of you goes to his friend at midnight and says, friend, let me, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine has come to me on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. Now, in the days of Jesus, you had no idea when the person was going to show up. It's not like they got in a car. They said, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Late, worst case scenario, there's a traffic jam. You get there an hour later. That's not the case. When you started out on a journey, you never know what time you were going to arrive. It could be at three o'clock, it could be at midnight. And suppose the, the one inside answers, so your friend that you're banging on his door, don't bother me. My door is already shut and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not give up to provide for him because of his friendship, yet because of the man's persistence, everybody say persistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Aren't you glad that if you are persistent with God, he will give you whatever and how much you want? Oh, but if you don't believe me, here's what Jesus says in verse 11. 11, 11. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? So you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Oh my, I don't know about you, but if you're hungry for more of the Spirit of God, if you're hungry for more of hearing his voice, if you're hungry to go up into it, if you've never been in the throne room of God and you've never had that experience and you want to experience it, all you have to say is, Lord, I want to experience that. Lord, I want to, I'm going to set aside some time. I'm going to, I'm going to set aside a time for you and I'm going to pursue you. And I am going to, I'm going to just give you my life. And I want, cause I want to worship. It happens in worship a lot. Sometimes it doesn't even happen in worship. It just happens when you're just there talking to God. He just begins to show you things, brings you up into another realm. It doesn't mean you leave your body like Paul. It just means that you're spiritually in the two, you're just there. I remember one time I was worshiping at my house. Next thing I know, I'm in the throne room of God and I'm the, these big doors open and I'll, I'm seeing this and seeing this in the spirit. And these big doors, they had, the doors had to be at least 30 feet high. Then there's opening into the throne room. And I looked and there was, they weren't columns, but they looked like columns, but they were angels. And they were lined up all the way down the hall. And these angels had to be 30 or 40 feet high. And they're standing at perfect attention. And as I'm walking through and I'm looking up at them and they're like this, look kind of, they, they can't move their head just like a regular military stands, but they're peering down at me as I'm walking into the throne room of God. And, you know, and of course I had a conversation with God and it was wonderful, but he asked me something and I'll never forget it. And he said, what do you want? And I'm going through the Rolodex of all the things that I could have. I'm, I mean, I could have asked for a healing right then. I could have asked for whatever it was I could have asked for at that moment in time. And I'm going through the Rolodex in my brain. And I said, Lord, I want to change the world. Out of everything, anything I could have asked, that's what came out of my spirit. I want to change the world. Be a world changer. You only can do that but through him and with the spirit of God. Do you know that? You can't do anything by, Jesus said, you can't do anything of your own. But everything that you do, it's through me. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to send one back to you that's going to be with you forever. And through him, you're able to accomplish everything that I'm asking of you. Be a world changer. Listen, world, and when I mean world, it could mean your world. It could mean your sphere, or it could be the world. It could be that God has a plan for you to travel. It could be a, that God has a plan for you to go to other nations. But it could be the fact that whatever, whatever sphere in your life, whatever, whatever that metron, that metron, that area, that sphere, that authority that you have, and the people that are around there, whatever that is in your life is your world, and that is what you can change. You can be impactful to everybody around you. Are you here tonight? Yeah. All right. Matthew 5, 6 says this, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. They're going to be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be filled. Not they, they might be filled. They will be filled. Blessed. To be hungry, to be hungry in your physical body means that your stomach is empty. There's nothing in it. When you eat, 
you nourish your body and it gives you strength, right? When I'm hungry, your stomach starts groaning. You're like, oh man, I'm on a fast. I'm, I'm like, I've been on my, I'm 15 days in and I still got 15 days to go and I'm craving some snacks that you can't have. But maybe you're not fasting. Maybe you're just hungry. And you know, when you put junk in your body, when you put junk food in your body because there's nothing else to grab, it does absolute, it may fill you up, but it gives you no nutritional value at all, right? The same thing with the word of God. When you feed on the word of God, when you feed on spiritual things, it is nourishing you, it is strengthening you. When you pray, when you, when you use your gifts, when you do all the things, that the, all the equipment that the Holy Spirit has given to us, it builds you up, it strengthens you, and not only you, but like I said, it strengthens the body as well. It strengthens the body, it strengthens your body, it strengthens the body, Right? Two or three agree. That's good because I'm in good company. It's biblical. I got two or three agreeing with me. (laughs) Blessed. Blessed. If you're hungry, you're blessed. If you're thirsting after righteousness, you're blessed. Jesus said, You will be filled. You will be filled. You will be filled. You will be, there's a constant, there's a continual filling and infilling. There's a continual filling. The Spirit doesn't fill you just once, but there's a filling. There's a filling. And I just say to you, just lift up your hands. And Jesus, right now, I pray that you fill your people afresh, Lord. Fill them a fresh anointing, Lord, in their bodies, in their spirits, in, in Jesus' name. Fill afresh, Lord. Fill. Fill. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. What is he talking about that? He's talking about things in the natural. The the kingdom of God is not natural stuff. It's not natural. You need food and drink for your body to keep it nourished, to keep it healthy. But Paul says that's not what the kingdom of God is all about. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy. Jesus said, if you crave, if you crave and thirst and are hungry after righteousness, you will be filled. Notice the things that we should be craving and seeking after are righteousness, righteousness, righteous things, righteous things that are only found through his word, through his spirit, through his kingdom, through his church, through his body, through his life. Natural versus spiritual. I need things in the natural because what blessing, blessing also, uh, the blessing of the Lord makes it rich. He has no sorrow to it. That rich mean, that rich does not mean spiritual. It means that it means to have excessive quantity. Listen to me. I don't know why people have such a hard time with seeing people prosper. I mean, why do we have problems with the prosperity when Abraham prospered? When everybody I look at that had, Jacob had flocks. They all had flocks. They had too many flocks. They had, they had to separate. Lot had to go his way. Abraham, they had too much stuff. They were blessed. There's nothing wrong with being blessed. Listen, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing upon your life, the blessing maketh you rich. It makes you rich. You cannot, listen, when the blessing of God is on you and in you, when you that's covenant. If you are in covenant with the Lord, blessing, it, you can't, you could be like, no, Lord, I don't want to be blessed. I just want to starve. Why would you do that? I'm like, I want more. Give me more, Lord. I'll take more. If it's spiritual, give me more spiritual. Because here's the thing. If you are blessed spiritually and you are in covenant, you have to prosper. You have to increase. You have to increase. Because it's it's against the law of God for you not to. It is against the covenant that Jesus made for you not to prosper. You have to. It is God's covenant. Jesus didn't shed his blood so you could starve to death and be spiritually broke. He did it so that you could, listen, he went through what he went through so that you could be free of it, so that you could prosper, that you could be wealthy, that not just in the natural, but also in the spirit. Listen, beloved, I would have you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So if your soul is prospering, your mind, will, and emotions, what you need to adjust through the word of God and the spirit, and if that's prospering, then everything else is going to prosper. My mind's going to prosper. My emotions are going to prosper. I'm going to feel good. My body's going to feel good. Listen, when my mind is in the gutter, my body doesn't feel good. When I wake up in the morning, my, my video today, when I wake up in the morning, I mean, I was good when I went to bed last night. I felt good last night. I was joyful. I felt good. I'm going to have a great day tomorrow. I wake up in the morning and someone attacked me during the middle of the night. 
I don't know what happened. I feel like I got 100 pounds on me. I don't know about you, but if, I, if you've never woken up that way before, you're blessed. But I don't know about you, but there's some mornings when I wake up and I'm like, oh, Lord, I definitely feel 125 today. And I'm only 10. But see, the authority that we have when I, when I speak to those things, I can say it, I can agree with it, I can come into agreement with it, I can come into alignment with it, but it's a lie. So I got to be like, you know what? I got a beautiful wife. I love my wife. She's amazing. Lord, I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my marriage. I have a great marriage. That's where I start. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for the good things that you've given to me. I thank you that she's a hard worker. Lord, she's, she loves me. She cares for me. She provides, and she takes care of me. It's good to be a trophy husband. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. Oh, jeez. <laughs> She's not in agreement with that. <laughs> but you speak, you speak truth, and when you speak truth, it breaks all that garbage off that the enemy's trying to lie. Right? Come on. 1 Corinthians 2.13 says this, And this is what we speak, mm, mm, mm. not in words taught by human wisdom, but words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths with spiritual words. The natural man does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. Imagine that. Everybody's still trying to figure out what tongues are in the natural. They're still trying to figure it out. We got the theologians going, I don't know what it is. Well, of course you don't because it's not a natural language. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. The natural man does not accept the things that come from the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. I'm talking about when, you, when things are happening in the spiritual, you need spiritual. Spirit to spirit. It's not flesh to spirit. The, the spirit, that, that, that nasty old demonic thing wants to attack your body and your mind. He can't attack your spirit, so he's got to go after everything else. He can't get your spirit... He can't come after your spirit. He's a spirit. He's coming after your body. He's a flesh-eating devil. He will come after your mind, will, and emotions in your body. But thank God that I, that's why I need discernment. That's why I need the spirit of God in me, my spirit, to discern what's going on around me. Because sometimes what I'm fighting is not natural. It's supernatural. That's why we need to be a spiritual church again. Because there are some things, mm, there's some things that are coming on the horizon. And you got to be able to see in the spirit. I say you're going to have to take them out in the spirit first. You're going to have to take down those things that are hovering over your nation. And the only way you can do that is through me. And my, by my spirit, there's no other way. For I say to you, what you think looks like amassing as a weapon of warfare, it is happening first in the, in the supernatural. For I say, everything that is happening in the natural first, 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 first is accumulating in the, the supernatural, in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual world. So in the name of Jesus, we just break authority, the plans of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. I, we take down, we pull down, we pull them down by the authority that Jesus has given us. And I just speak to the, those, ma- those weapons of mass destruction in the spiritual realm that are trying to destroy our nation and other nations. And we just say to you in Jesus' name, be dismantled. We pull down every lie, every word that's being trying to weave together and cause this thing. And we just say to you, Jesus, we say to you in Jesus' name, be broken be scattered, be disoriented in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Are you spiritually rich? If you're hungry and you're thirsting after righteousness and you're being filled and blessed, if you're blessed and the blessing of the Lord makes you rich because it's not just in the natural, it's also in the spiritual Prosperity, praise of God. This is what it means. Um, Daniel, I'm on the blessing there, uh, the definition. It means gift, present, which we have received. It means a treaty of peace. And like I said, it literally means to grow and increase in size and in number. The body of Christ is growing. And they added to their numbers daily. And they increased 
It is a biblical, it is biblical to increase. It is biblical to increase. It is biblical to prosper. It is biblical to operate in the spirit. (laughs) It is biblical to be able to see, hear, and know things to come. See, there's no lack in the kingdom, just treasure. Treasure. There's treasure. There's treasure in you. There's treasure inside of you. There's treasure in people out there that don't know it yet. That's why we we have these things that call what? Treasure hunts. There's treasures in you that God wants to bring out shamakata. The Holy Spirit wants to bring forth his good, his, this good nature out of you. There's goodness in you. There's treasures. There's gifts and callings and things inside of you that he wants to bring up. He wants to bring up in this season. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So are you rich? Everybody say, I'm rich. I'm rich. Now, the funny thing is that Jesus says this, though. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. Think about that. If you're poor in spiritual things, you're blessed because the kingdom of God is yours. And what is it full of? Treasures. Kingdom. Spiritual things. Jesus said the spirit, this, Jesus said the kingdom of God is in front of you. It's right here. It's right now. It was, it's coming, and it will be coming again. It's now, and it's not yet. It's now, and it's not yet. It's, con- it's, it's continually coming. The kingdom of God is continually coming. It's continually coming. It's continually advancing. It's continually advancing. Revelations 3.16 For you claim, I'm rich and I'm getting richer. I don't need a thing. Yet, you are clueless. Imagine that, Jesus telling the church they're clueless. That you're miserable, poor, blind, barren, and naked. And I talked a lot about that last week and we looked at it. But he goes on to say, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich in white garments You need to buy so that you may be rich and buy white garments so that you may be clothed yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Now I want to break this down and understand because this is going back into my message and this ties everything together. But what you have to understand about the Laodicean church is number one, they they became a, a Christian city of great wealth with extensive banking resources and operations. But in 60 AD, they were nearly destroyed. And they were so wealthy that they declined aid from Rome to help rebuild. They did it by themselves. Now, they were famous specifically for fine black wool of its sheep and for the Phrygian powder for their eyes, which was manufactured there and used by occultists for the famous medical school at Laodicea. Now, you have an understanding of why Jesus said to them, you need to rub my eye salve on your eyes. Think about it. So they're producing these things. They're producing garments that are made from black wool. And they think, and they're very prosperous. And they're very prosperous. And they have this salve that they use to help heal the eyes. And they're, and they're producing this so they're creating wealth for themselves. And they think, now here's the interesting part, that they think they're, they're rich. And that word rich, which we talked about, actually in this, in Revelation, it means his abundance that comes from receiving his provisions, both material and spiritual, but more dealing with the spiritual things through faith. So he says, you think you're rich. In other words, you think that you're, the abundance that you have is from me, and it's not. You're very wealthy, and you're creating things, and you're creating wealth, but it's not from me. And then he goes on to say that you're clueless, meaning that you're unaware. 
And that actually means to see into the spiritual realm, to perceive spiritual truth. And then he goes on to say that, that what we discussed last week, and I, and I broke this down a little bit more, you're, you're beaten down, deeply, deeply miserable. This is what the church doesn't understand. They think, they're, they think they're doing well, but Jesus is like, no, this is what you're really like. You're miserable. You're in great need of mercy. You're bent over, to, and it means to actually be like a beggar, crouching over, deeply destitute, completely lacking resources, blind and poorly clothed. Now, he goes on to say, you need to buy gold for me. Why in the world would Jesus say that? And it needs to be refined in fire. So what is gold? What exactly do they need gold for? Because evidently they have enough of their own wealth and resources. But gold is actually refers to this. It is faith. It has to do with their faith. That's why when we fast forward now into Revelation 19, he says, you have to buy white garments from me to clothe yourself from your nakedness. Revelation 19, 7, and then we, we realize that he says it was granted to her to put on white garments, which is from the saints, the righteousness of the saints. So think about what I was saying. Those who hunger and seek after righteousness will be filled. Our righteousness comes from Jesus and our faith in Christ. So the, the bride... When she makes herself ready, it says it was granted to her to put on fine linen garments, to put on white garments, to put on linen, purity, that were produced from the righteous deeds of the saints. So let me say this to to you like this. Her garments were created by the righteousness, the hunger that that we, what we hunger and long for and what we seek after that Jesus fills us with creates the garment of the bride. I had a friend that was at, he lives in Los Angeles, the LA area, and he was invited to a party. And he was amongst all these celebrities and he felt so out of place. And he's like, my gosh, I must be the poorest person in this room. And the Holy Spirit said to him, you're the richest person in this room. See, our, and, and, and uh, these messages and what I've, God has been saying, he's like, you have to understand that that everything that he's been saying about being blind and being poor, and remember I said that our nation, right, our nation, is in, our nation needs us. Our nation needs the church. And so what I'm saying, what I believe God is saying to the church is that if you get back to the basics of what I left you, which is seeing, hearing, operating your gifts, listen. And when I'm talking about this, I'm not saying that because, listen, the foot is made for walking and standing and balance. The eyes are made for seeing. The ears are made for hearing. The toe, the toe doesn't go, I want to be able to hear. It does its job. When, it's, when I stub my toe, my toe doesn't get bent out of shape. Well, it does get out of bent out of shape, literally. But it doesn't get mad at my eyes and go, I'm never talking to you again. Why didn't you let me know? Why, didn't you, why weren't you watching? How come you didn't see that, that corner of that table and not kick it? But no, so what do we do? We go, oh, oh, and I jump up and down. I hold my toe and it's throbbing. And when I touch it, it hurts so bad. And then what do I do? I begin to care for it and I begin to love my toe. I don't grab a machete and cut it off. (laughs) Although it might feel better. Right? And so what am I saying? I'm saying that because in, we started off with this about if, when I was talking about the Ephesians and about the gifts and, and the callings of God and how the apostles and how they equip. Remember I said John went up into the heavens. And, and what was his job? His job was to gain revelation and come back and speak to the church. And then from there, it says in Ephesians that they are to, to take what they, God gives them and build up the church. And the more that we operate in those gifts and callings and things, the more that we're built up. And what are we being built up in love? Ephesians, it says that we are being built up in love. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Builds itself up in love. See, when we speak to one another, see, this is the thing. When the more time that I'm hungering and seeking after righteousness and after Jesus and after the Holy Spirit and after those things, the more that it fills me, the more that it's going to push out all of those things that aren't righteous. 
the more it's going to see, because God will put you in situations where you're going to have to develop patience, where you're going to have to be loving and kind to people that you don't want to be. Because what is going to happen, and, and you know, I believe that, you know, the story of the banquet, I'm going to close with this, the story of the banquet, where Jesus says, I'm having a party, I'm having a wedding, and I go out and get everybody in fact, the last chosen episode that we just watched, number seven, it was in this, and Jesus, they went to the, the, the Decapolis, and they, they got the whole city messed up but because they preached this message, they said. They had everything all torn up. This was in the movie. And so he says, he, he calls the people that are supposed to come to the banquet, and everybody's too busy. And so then he goes, well, go out into the, the hedges and the byways and the highways and, and gather everybody, grab, all the, grab everybody that's sick or whatever, whoever, have them all come. If the, if the, the people that are supposed to come don't want to come, let the others come. And, and here's what I'm saying is that, that maybe, just maybe, if we, if we aren't careful as a church that we're going to miss what God is doing in these days, and he's going to have to say, because the church could be very much like and I hate being John the Baptist sometimes. The church can be very much like, I don't want that. I don't want that spiritual stuff. I don't want those spiritual things. I'm okay with where I'm, I'm content with, with our, I'm content with our Sunday morning and our good things and our good feelings and all these things. And I'm okay with singing these songs and I'm okay with just where, where I have everybody at. And if they're not careful, those spiritual leaders are going to miss what God is doing. And he's going to have to go out into the further places and get those who, who want, who are, who are, weren't even supposed to have it, get them, bring them into the kingdom and use them. Instead, I hear you. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. I'm telling you right now that if, you're, if the church is not careful, God is doing something completely new that has never been seen before. Dear Jesus, why does he make me preach these messages sometimes? I don't know. <laughs> but what I'm feeling in my spirit, what I feel in the spirit of God saying right now is that, listen, I'm going to do things that no eye has ever seen. Even the past revivals and the things that have been documented I am going to do something completely new that is going to catch so many off guard and they're not going to be ready for it. And I'm saying to you tonight, be ready for something completely new that you've never witnessed before. And it's coming in a way that is going to take you by storm. It's going to take you by force. And if you're willing to be caught up with me, if you're, really, if you're willing to be caught up into that place, I will reveal to you ahead of time what it is that I'm going to do. I will give you a glimpse and you'll know and you'll be able to walk down that path. Man, I sure do like Friday night. I don't know about you. Woo. You can stand up. Jesus, we're so thankful for you, Lord. We, we sang about it for an hour. Lord, we're thankful for you, Jesus. We're was so happy to see your face. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. For, and Lord, I just pray over everybody here, Lord. And, and the gift sets that they have, Lord, I just pray for more. Lord, the, the, the supernatural abundance and anointing on their lives, God, I pray for more. I just release more to them. Lord, I say that you would increase them, as Paul prayed to the Ephesian church, Lord, that you would increase them in every way, Lord, that their eyes of their spirit would be open to see what the hope of the inheritance of the saints is, God, and they would know what the hope of the calling is in Christ Jesus, and they would be blessed in Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. If you need prayer, we're here. Come receive some prayer.